Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am R Indira, formerly professor of sociology at the University of Mysore and paper coordinator for the course Education and Society. My presentation covers this module on indigenous modes of education which is written by Dr. K. G. Gayatri Devi, formerly faculty, Institute of Social and Economic Change, Bengaluru. The module basically raises critical questions about the role of indigenous modes of education in contemporary society. Indigenous, the word itself suggests that it is closely connected to one's lifestyle, cultural bearings and is very close to the life that one leads. But in today's world, how relevant is indigenous education? Isn't it not important that children and adults, whoever it may be, should have the freedom to learn in a cultural ambience with which one is familiar? Yes, surely is the answer. However, in the fast changing world, it is also important for youngsters to be acquainted with the changes taking place in society at large. So the module discusses the advantages of indigenous while at the same time recognizes the need for children from indigenous communities and those cultural settings which have always had a history of their own educational theories and practices to be acquainted with modern education. Modern societies and education. Having been introduced thus, education is mostly provided through formal means in all countries of the world today, in a structured environment through formal pedagogical means. The modern education system rests upon a set of values or ideals based on a belief system characterizing the way a child's intellect should flourish to meet a certain need, primarily economic, to make it eligible for employment purposes. The school environment is associated with the concept of classrooms, teachers, curriculum, and organization, hours of learning or teaching, examinations and patterns of assessment, and so on. Beginning with preschools and then continuing through primary, secondary, and higher secondary, education progresses to a system of imparting life skills and knowledge in select fields which is known as higher education. Here, an adolescent is exposed to the process of acquiring a higher level of knowledge with a stress on specialization. Besides these, there is also special education for disabled children and adults, managed by special teachers and trainers. There is also what is known as alternative education, which as argued by some has existed for a long time. The reason behind its genesis was the discontentment with the existing education system. Mention is also made of self-learning, homeschooling and unschooling. A number of approaches emerged as a result of continued interest and thinking about what should be the norm in education. Indigenous education. The emphasis in this type of education is on the term indigenous. The word refers to something that is one's own and self-acquired or self-learnt and self-owned, where the owner is invested with the rights to use it according to his or her convenience and even make alterations in it. The argument behind the efforts of those who are striving to popularize indigenous education or knowledge system is that sophisticated knowledge of the natural world is not confined to science. Human societies all across the globe have developed rich sets of experiences and explanations relating to the environments they live in. These other knowledge systems are today often referred to as traditional ecological knowledge or indigenous or local knowledge. They encompass the sophisticated arrays of information, understandings and interpretation that guide human societies around the globe in their innumerable interactions with the natural milieu, in agriculture and animal husbandry, hunting, fishing and gathering, struggles against disease and injury, 
naming and explanation of natural phenomena and strategies to cope with fluctuating environments. What is indigenous knowledge? Indigenous knowledge or indigenous education is defined as local knowledge which is the treasure of a given society and its culture. It is its cultural capital. Hence it is passed on from one generation to the other chiefly or solely by word of mouth, practices, rituals, arts and crafts and a number of other aspects of daily life. Almost all aspects of life of the individuals in that society contribute to such accumulation of knowledge and learning. Local life experiences are used to learn survival and adaptation to the challenges of life. Sustainable life is the focus here. Indigenous education is not informal learning alone, but relates to the recognition and acquisition of traditional skills and knowledge that have been demolished or made redundant due to the introduction of modern systems of education. Arguments and explanations in support of indigenous knowledge. The fundamental argument in support of indigenous knowledge or indigenous education is that nearly 350 million indigenous people of the world have been historically subjected to exclusion, expulsion, and exploitation from groups enjoying political or economic power. The process has basically alienated them from their own lands and habitation, forcing them not only to become dispossessed of their livelihoods, but also lose all their cultural treasure and accumulated knowledge base. Besides total loss of cultural identity, the main impact is on their economic survival strategies that were built over a long period of adaptation to the environment where they have lived for generations. Critics of modern education stem mainly from those sectors and persons who advocate that children and youth must be educated in their own cultures. That too using indigenous language and cultural symbols or signals. These protagonists of indigenous knowledge feel that not only the content and pedagogy of education has changed and is biased towards modern urban societies, but also that indigenous communities are eliminated from any participation in designing the courses. They are discriminated and targeted. The current scenario according to the supporters of indigenous education is that the youth in indigenous communities today are alienated from their own base. Thus alienation is being experienced in various aspects of life of these communities. Modern education introduced by the British roughly during the 1830s and 70s was characterized by centrality of textbooks and examinations. In the place of local knowledge, the new curriculum included teaching and learning in English or other languages and contents mostly included Western concepts and practices. This process which is generally attributed to the missionaries continued with the support of local rulers, social reformers and many in the British administration. From the student's point of view, Western education was considered primarily a gateway to lucrative employment. Education became more and more textbook centric and there was little or no place for experience centric knowledge which was the hallmark of indigenous modes of education. There is thus a difference in the point of view of protagonists of indigenous system of education and those who advocate western ideology based modern systems of education. The former contests the utility of the latter by arguing that it has disrupted the adoption of knowledge acquired through everyday experiences. Knowledge is described by the former as the new agent of power and legitimate knowledge. The feeling was that the strengths of indigenous learning were not being recognized. These strengths were identified to be group learning or cooperative learning with a scope for an inclusive environment, observation, imitation, narratives such as storytelling, collaboration, cooperation, learning through inclusion, teacher-student interactions, inclusion, motivation, assessment by self. The advantages of indigenous education are now gaining a new recognition and visibility in many quarters. 
At the same time, the need for the young in indigenous communities to get access to modern education cannot be overruled. Children from local communities are placed in a situation where they have to absorb modern methods of teaching learning and in the process are being alienated from their traditional knowledge base. Ancient wisdom and indigenous knowledge are losing their hold on tribal societies and the autonomy in learning and its application which they enjoyed are now being considered non-utilitarian. Though it's very important to recognize and support indigenous education based on traditional practices, one cannot totally devalue the benefits of modern Western education for indigenous communities. The problem arises because of the changed situation in which they are placed today. With the loss of livelihoods and destabilization caused by deforestation and decay of many rural and traditional occupations, indigenous communities today are caught in a compulsive need to accept and adopt modern practices. The acquisition of traditional skills and knowledge about survival strategies are more or less not useful in the new setup where they are now placed. They are often forced to migrate from their traditional habitats in search of livelihoods and their children. In the present circumstances, cannot manage their life with indigenous knowledge only. This has to be viewed in a positive sense, keeping the changing socio-cultural context of contemporary times. Indigenous communities being vulnerable also lack the economic and political power to influence policy making. It is not easy to replace modern education with an indigenous one. Indigenous groups expect education to build their capacities to seek better life chances and provide the economic and cultural capital required to survive in the modern, industrialized, new global cities and towns. They expect to be absorbed into urban occupations as rural and tribal areas do not offer them sustainable livelihoods today. Education is looked upon as a means of rising up from poverty, squalor and marginalized status. Many governments in the global era have been successfully incorporating multicultural values in their educational curriculum. This has to be viewed in a positive sense, keeping the changing socio-cultural context of contemporary times. Education is considered a long-term investment to end structural and basic inequalities among people. Indigenous communities have the right to access education, but that form of learning which will not destabilize their social organization and livelihood basis and make them inferior to others. Their right to access education and learning in their own languages and cultures is upheld by world organizations like the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. The emphasis in these indigenous modes of education is against imposition and inflection of values and knowledge that harm native communities and their cultures and traditions. Efforts have been made to achieve reduction in the divide between indigenous and non-indigenous populations as regards educational advancement beyond post-secondary education where there is a serious gap between the two. Disparities in accessing university education continue even with the efforts of programs like the Sarvashik Shabiyan, Integrated Tribal Development Program and Tribal Subplan. Colonial rule and its impact are blamed for earlier education policies. The policies of the 1990s in particular witnessed far-reaching changes in the pedagogy and other aspects of education from primary to higher levels. Emphasis is now being placed upon reaching education to the people, our children, without drastically disturbing them from their own roots and culture. The new education method gives importance to non-formal teaching methods, teaching of local stories, learning games and hands-on exercises that revitalize indigenous knowledge. The local community is brought close to the whole process of learning and teaching with the setting up of community-based organizations like the school development managed committees for every school in all the villages and tribal pockets. 
Such inclusion of traditional methods in schools is expected to enhance educational effectiveness for both the indigenous and non-indigenous groups and communities. For the former, it is likely to prepare them to undergo the transition from their native culture to the advanced or new culture of the modern, industrialized and globalized societies. For the latter, such exposure to traditional aspects of one's own society through learning indigenous perspectives, language, experiences and folkways is expected to promote respect and recognition about cultural diversities. It is the expectation of some scholars that such education is also hopefully helpful in reducing ethnic and religious differences and enables a holistic and homogeneous learning atmosphere that may continue later in life to lead to greater conformity and consensus in societal living. The realization of the advantages of indigenous modes of education is now spreading in most countries. Besides governmental efforts, a number of voluntary agencies have been active in promoting the cause of such education. It is used as one of the critical strategies for social inclusion and mainstreaming of hitherto excluded, alienated, vulnerable communities. Besides this, it is considered as a method of bringing together the diverse cultures of a society into one stream for a unified and holistic development. Communalism, perennialism and group cohesion are highlighted as advantages of this type of education. A major setback to this effort to indigenize education is the growing cultural stagnation and the spread of consumerism as the hallmark of modern day living. Education is marketed today for better lifestyles. Globalization has eroded traditional occupations and livelihood options and indigenous communities have been the worst sufferers here. Standardization and hegemonization are the twin features of modern globalized societies. The complexities of the postmodern society and in particular of globalization and its other processes such as liberalization, privatization and the market-led economy dominated by information technology demand different skills and knowledge. Support to indigenous educational institutions by donors sometimes leads to pressures to accept certain ideologies that are antithetical to indigenous interests. What is affecting them is also the global measurement of the quality of education. Method of examinations and what is measured in them has often come in clash with local indigenously learnt and adapted curricula. English language has been a dominant force in globalized learning and teaching. To make matters worse, privatization has come in the way of the government support system to continue subsidies and other benefits to local communities. Although there are efforts to popularize indigenous education, the above challenges are placing difficulties in continuing the same. In the name of social and economic mobility, Rural societies are strongly advocating the continued functioning of modern schools. It's also true that large numbers of these rural youth are joining the unemployed cohorts in the cities and towns. In this presentation, we have discussed the relative advantages as well as limitations of sticking either completely to the traditional modes of knowledge acquisition and at the same time completely ignoring indigenous knowledge and moving to the learning theories and practices connected with modern education. What this advocates is that there should be a blend of indigenous modes of knowledge acquisition as well as modern educational practices. It is only then that it is possible to achieve the kind of convergence that is required both for recognizing the value of indigenous knowledge in cultural settings with which children and adults are familiar, as well as the need to move towards new forms of knowledge, new methods of pedagogy, and the new learning styles that have taken the world by literally a storm today.